Good morning. Welcome to our online service today. My name is David, and I'll be your worship director for this week. Today is, is a good day because it's Father's Day. Yay! And before we start our service here, I'd like to talk, share about how great my dad is. Um, my dad, he's a super chill guy. Um, for some reason, I feel like he knows every little thing. Like any problems I come up, like housework or car problems or something like weird, that's strange, like I don't know how the system works with taxes and stuff. My dad seems to know the solution for all those problems and I really appreciate that and I feel like I'm a bit too dependent on him but my dad, he's like a hero to me because the theme of stability pops in my head when I mention my dad. And the reason being is that my dad in my household, he always makes sure that we have enough money. We always make sure that we are okay, and he's always passing down wisdom. I know sometimes when he passes wisdom to me, I kind of get a little annoyed, like, yes, I get it, Dad. Let me try to learn it on my own for once. But I know that he loves me so much that he always passed down wisdom to me and my little sister. And the one wisdom I always remember that I can never forget is every time I'm driving, he, his voice pops in my head saying, it's okay, there's no need to rush. Um, if you're late, you're late, and it's true. Um, if you're rushing down and speeding through the highway and stuff, he's always mentioning what's worth it, getting a speeding ticket or just being late because you're always late no matter what. If you're five minutes or 10 minutes late, in the end, you're late. So thank you, Dad, for passing that wisdom, and there's many things that I like to talk about, but in the short time, I like to say, you guys, please thank your fathers for everything they do and just kind of reflect how much they do for you. And I know not everyone has the best father experience, but if you have anyone that you think that looks like, um, that gives a father figure, please thank them for that. Um, it really shows how much they really love us uh, and how much they really care for us too. So I just want to say thank you God for giving us amazing dads and as well as anyone that you have given us as a father figure. So let's just pray for now and then we'll start our worship service here today. So. Let's bow our heads together. Dear God, thank you so much for giving us the opportunity here on online and continue to learn wisdom from you. I also wanted to say thank you, God, for giving us a father figure in our lives as they pretty much show the same characteristic as you are, God. You always are there to provide wisdom and knowledge and support us and as well as just make sure our lives are stable enough for us to grow um, and get stronger in our time of challenges. So thank you God for being there for us. Thank you for giving us fathers. And thank you for giving us people that can continue to support us during our lives here. Um, I pray that you continue to be part of our lives in our weeks and continue to support us and guide us. I know there are times where things are not always going well, but we know that you're in control, God. And as well as you always give us a father figure for us to help us and show us and demonstrate us and remind us that you're still here. So thank you again, God, for giving us fathers um, or anyone that's a father figure. And thank you for being part of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Woo, getting a little steamy here, but let's start our worship service here. And as well as we're going to have a special slideshow for Father's Day here. So we'll start our service now. See you guys there. Bye. Not a 
flaws Lord, you've seen no more And you still call me friend Oh, God of the mountain Is the God of the valley There's not a place Your mercy and grace Won't find me again No man 
everything I've lost I have found in you When I finally reach the end I'll say You are worth it all You are worth it all When I'm there in your glorious presence Every knee is bowed before you Hear the sound of heaven singing You are worth it all All the saints cry holy, holy Angels singing worthy, worthy Forever I will shout your praises You are worth it all When I'm there in your glorious presence Every knee is bowed before you Hear the sound of heaven singing, you are worth it all. All the saints cry, holy, holy, angels singing, worthy, worthy. Forever I will shout your praises, you are worth it all. You are worth it all.
What an amazing HRT. And thank you again, HRT team, to taking your time, volunteering, and recording um, for our worship set and showing that COVID can't really stop us from worshiping our God. So thank you again. So before we start our announcements and in our service here today, let's just bow our heads together and pray. Thank you, God, for giving us the opportunity again. Um, I just pray that you, that you prevent us from being distracted from the things that we're struggling or things we're just focused on and just give us the strength just to focus on you right now at this moment, God, that you continue to be uh, with us. And this is the moment where we get to acknowledge your wisdom through our pastor here today. So I pray that you give us a good Sunday morning and a good Father's Day. And yeah, thank you for being such an amazing God with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you for joining us on our live worship service this Sunday. Here's a look at this week's announcements. A reminder that you can continue to support the ministry and staff of LCC through offering. You can give your offering via e-transfer through your banking app or website. Details can be found on our website at lighthouseyyc.ca slash give. The worship ministry is looking for volunteers to join the tech team to assist with live Sunday services. If you have any experience in these areas or are interested in learning how to produce our online services, please contact our worship deacon, Sam Fan, or I, David Tran. There will be a couples group and ice cream at St. Patrick Island Park on Friday, June 25th. If you have any questions or are interested in joining, please contact Pastor David. LCC has planned a hike on Saturday, June 26th. Time and location is to be announced but if you have any questions, please contact Pastor Tim for more information. There will be a men's group on July 7 at 7 p.m. and it will be at church. However, we also have another option. If you can't make it on at church, you can join us on online on Zoom and we'll be continuing our series on building strength. If you have any question or are interested, please contact Jeffrey Trump. There will be a women's group on July 7 as well with time and location to be announced. We'll be continuing our series on building strength. If you have any question or is interested, please contact Quinn. If you have any questions or comments about our church events or ministry, we would like to hear from you. Email us at info at lighthouseyyc.ca. Also, you can connect with us during the week on our Facebook page and Instagram account. You can also catch our previous sermons on our website and watch our live services on our YouTube channel. If you are a Telex Optic TV subscriber in Alberta and BC, you can also join us on Sunday morning by tuning in to channel 879. That's it for our announcements for this week, and our Sunday service will continue with a message from Pastor Tim in just a moment. Hi everyone, I have great news. We are just about ready to start meeting together again in this room. So on June 27, we will have in-person services at church at 9 a.m. every Sunday. For those of you who can't make it, that's all right. You can still find us online on YouTube and on our website and on Telesoptic. But for those of you who can make it, I think you'll be uplifted by our experience together. So see you June 27, 9 a.m. Albertans are excited to get their COVID-19 vaccine. To make sure we do it as effectively as possible, here's what you need to know. Simply remember to sign up, show up, and follow up. Sign up online when it's your turn. Call 811 or talk to your pharmacist. Show up and do your part to make sure as many Albertans as possible can get vaccinated. Then follow up with your second shot to boost your immunity and get fully protected. A message from the Government of Alberta. Like what you see? Subscribe to our YouTube channel, watch our worship services and messages wherever you are, and share the good news to your friends online. Search Lighthouse YYC on YouTube and subscribe.
Hi, happy Father's Day to, to all the dads out there who are tuning in. Uh, just want to say a quick thank you for all the love that you pour into your kids in, in so many different ways, right? Through your work, through your leisure time, through your efforts in uh, playing with them and teaching them and especially empowering their moms to do the best work that they can do. And so, yeah, uh, personally for me, this is my first Father's Day and my first go at this whole dad thing. And as a result, I've been thinking about my own dad a lot more, uh, more empathetic towards him. And I'm just thinking about how he raised me. Growing up, my dad, he was like a very practical guy, right? So if something worked, that was good enough for him. So he would, he would eat the same foods over and over and over again. He would drive a beat up car as long as it got him from point A to point B. Um, he would wear the same clothes like forever he would only switch them out if there was like a rip or a tear that was beyond repair and i remember i'll always remember his shoes okay my dad he had these red italian leather shoes that he simply adored okay and he loves them not because it's fashionable it's, it's like red you know but he loved them because they lasted him forever Okay, and as a practical guy, he would always tell me the same story about these shoes. He would always say, before you were born, that's 1993, I bought these shoes at a thrift store. And they've lasted me till this day. And literally, like to this day, for us right now, he still wears these shoes and he loves that, okay? And for me, personally, I'm like, I think those shoes are hideous and I think my dad should take part in, you know, stimulating the economy, but that's what he loves, that was, that's what makes him happy. And for me, especially in high school, that made no sense because shoes, they had to do certain things, right? They had to be fashionable, they had to be comfortable, they had to have brand names so that, you know, people looking in would be like, oh, yo, those are six shoes. And they had to, like, at least match your outfit. So I would have never worn red shoes ever. Um, but that's what made me happy. And you can kind of see how my dad and I were, were different back then. Uh, I'm, I'm more like him these days, more practical. But anyways, we can explain our differences by what makes us happy. And that explains the differences between a lot of people. Because most people, I think all people, they want to be happy. They want pleasure. And normally, a person's strategy for pleasure revolves around things like entertainment and memorable experiences, competition, achievement, um, relationships, and possessions, like what you own. And I think that we can all agree that some strategies for happiness are, are much better than other strategies for happiness. For example, um, this is kind of crude, but most people, they, they don't want to be drug addicts. Even though drug addicts, they experience a kind of happiness. And with that said, there are better strategies for happiness than, than others. And so we need to choose our strategy, strategies for happiness and pleasure. And Christians, um, as, we, as we face this choice, we actually tend to make um, two wrong choices, two bad decisions. And they're kind of opposite, okay? The first one, the first choice is that we chase after the same dreams as everyone else, even those who aren't Christians. So we have our life revolve around very superficial things like money and prestige and whatever else we chase after, careers. And that doesn't seem to be like the best choice for us. But on the other side, the other wrong choice you make is that we kind of say, okay, you know what? Worldly pleasure, that is evil. That's non-spiritual. I'm going to cut out all of that, right? So that actually makes for a Christian who is quite rigid and judgmental and like a complete killjoy and they're not very happy okay and they don't really want other people to be happy either but the, the bible it teaches us a better way that's what we're going to talk about today this week we're, we're starting a new series uh in the book of ecclesiastes okay and i i love this book especially when i was going through my whole like 2000s emo phase because it completely expressed everything my punk rock songs would say. Like, what's the point of life, okay? Especially when, when all of life seems to be so vain, so fleeting, and the narrator of the books, right? He, this book, he, he goes through a bunch of different aspects of life and then concludes it's all fleeting and therefore it's pointless, okay? 
It's meaningless. It's vain. And today we get to take a quick look at what he says in regards to chasing after pleasure. Our big question today is, what is the point of worldly pleasure? Our passage is from Ecclesiastes 2, 10 to 11. And this is what the teacher in this book says. And whatever my eyes desired, I did not keep from them. I kept from my heart no pleasure, for my heart found pleasure in all my toil, and this was the reward for all my toil. Then I considered all that my hands had done and the toil I had expended in doing it, and behold, all was vanity and a striving after wind, and there was nothing to be gained under the sun." Yeah, that's, that's definitely 2000s emo rock music. Depressing. Uh, my, my big idea today is worldly pleasure is a means to an end. So, so contrary to what many people believe, worldly pleasure is not the end goal. It's, it's, it's not the ultimate thing we're chasing, but it's a means to gain something that is even better. And my first point is worldly pleasure is a dead end. Um, do, do any of you play sports or, or watch sports or have ever been invested in like any kind of team or competition? What I find is uh, I always find the amount of value we put into winning doesn't always match the outcome of actually winning. And, and here's what I mean by that. 2019 NBA. Yo, yeah, those were good times. Um, I, know, I know most of us were all in that Raptors bandwagon back then. Where, where that legendary shot in the Game 7 against 76ers was like literally the most euphoric thing ever. And during that whole run, I feel like we, were, we would have given anything and everything to win. And winning that championship meant everything to us. I, I like lost sleep over being so excited. And the best thing is, we did it, right? Raptors won for the first time in like forever and we celebrated hard. And we like, you know, bought like t-shirts that said champions and had hats that said champions and all that. And for us now, you know, fast forward two years, uh, we, we, we kind of, every now and then we say, yo, remember that time we won? And it's like, oh yeah, yeah, that was a, that was a good year. And that's about the extent of it, right? Uh, but the reality is life just went on. Life goes on. Uh, that Toronto team broke apart. Uh, our favorite player, Jeremy Lin, stopped playing for the NBA. COVID-19 uh, hit, and there was like another NBA championship now, and Raptors isn't doing that well. And that season where it just meant the world to us to, to win that championship, that is just like a blip in our memory now. Life goes on. And that short and fleeting moment of happiness, that seems to be the universal nature of worldly pleasure. In our passage, our teacher who is who, who's saying all this, he, he's telling us that he thought he could be fulfilled through the absolute pursuit of all worldly pleasures. And if you actually read from the beginning of chapter 2 of Ecclesiastes, you'll see that this guy, he had it all, okay? Everything. The pleasure in owning things, in relationships, in work and comfort, security, prestige, respect, honor, pretty much any ladder you could climb to gain pleasure, he had climbed to the top of all of those ladders. And what does he say about it? He says all of it was done in vain, right? It was, it was like a chasing after the wind. It achieved nothing. It was pointless. And hearing that should be terrifying for us because thousands of years later, we have the exact same strategy to satisfy ourselves. And this guy is saying, hey, it won't work. I remember I had a phase in university uh, where I was really thinking about like, you know, school and career paths and stuff. And there, there was a moment where I was just so hyper aware, hyper sensitive to the fact that no matter what direction I took my life in, it would be so pointless, right? Because I, I, I school for 20 years, I climb that career ladder for 40, I retire um, and do nothing for another 20 years, and then I just die. And if that's the case, why even do anything? Why even chase any career or any kind of pleasure? And it, it's like pointless. And here's the 
But here's the reality of it. If we didn't know God, then I think the answer is, it is pointless, right? Whether you do anything or you do nothing, it doesn't make a difference. That's logical. That makes sense. And we're just like, we're just like advanced monkeys. But at the end of the day, we're still just doing monkey business. What does that mean? It means that this guy, he's, he's right. If, if the end goal of life is just worldly, worldly pleasure, it's going to amount to nothing. Think about it. What did you uh, put a lot of value in, let's say even last week, that doesn't matter this week? For me, I was really looking forward to the restrictions lifting and we can like eat in the restaurant. And I did, I, I went to my favorite restaurants, I ate, and what is it now? It's those meals and those enjoyments, it's just like vague memories in my head. Or here's another thing, I was looking for a, a bike accessory uh, and I got it. And I'm like, oh sick, I, I felt good. And now it's just something that's on my bike and I don't even notice it. Uh, and it's, it seems that the more I chase for these worldly pleasures, the more I'm like actually unhappy. And that's like, that's so weird, right? I'm getting what I want and I'm not actually being satisfied. And I know that this whole toxic relationship with, you know, chasing after worldly pleasures is not just me. Okay. That's the consumerist message of our world right now. And it's a very dangerous and unsatisfying attitude to be in. So we actually are able to combat this message intentionally, okay? Uh, we, we say that we don't want to be a victim of consumerism and instant gratification and addiction to uh, things like shopping and gaming and social media approval and food and so on. And so there's actually a practice called dopamine fasting, okay? And dopamine is that, that quick hit of happiness you get from getting you know, uh, an Instagram like or eating a burger. And, and what dopamine fasting is, is where we intentionally say no to all these little good things in life as an attempt to gain control over ourselves and not mindlessly just give in to our impulses. And I believe that by doing this, we're able to slowly train ourselves to be grateful for just the simple things in life and the things that we already have been given. We're trying to, to turn our, our gaze away from the created things of God and actually fix our eyes on the creator, God himself. If the end goal of life is worldly pleasures, then you will for sure be greatly disappointed. But that doesn't mean that worldly pleasures are completely evil or, or useless in the grand scheme of things. And that leads us to our second point. Worldly pleasure as a means, so like as a tool and a stepping stone, actually leads us to a fulfilled life. Um, for those in sports, you probably know this, but specifically for me, in volleyball, you will come across quite a few people who just like spiking balls, okay? They're literally there just to spike balls. I, I had someone yell at me because I didn't, you know, put the ball up, I didn't set it for them to hit. And so sometimes it's to the point where they don't even care if they're winning or losing or if they're straining their friendships. As long as they spike balls, they're happy. And it, it kind of makes sense because spiking, that's where the exciting part of volleyball is. That's where the action is. That's where the glory is. It's, it's usually with all the spiking. But the reality is if spiking balls is the end goal of the reason why you even play volleyball, then very likely you won't win many games. Uh, and very likely you won't have many people who would want to play with you. And you're actually missing out. You're, you're unable to fully experience all that the sport of volleyball has to offer. And for example, some of those things are the satisfaction of you know, other skills like defense and support skills or, or the, the bonds of of good friendships in your team that mutually encourage and support one another or even the feeling you get from knowing that because of your support and your good attitude everyone is actually getting better as a team and they are leaving happier you you miss out on all of that because you're just so tunnel vision focused onto just spiking balls 
So when spiking balls is the end goal rather than just the means for something that is greater, um, I, I, I would say that you're ruining volleyball. So it makes sense to prioritize, you know, the experience of the team and winning as a team over simply, simply spiking balls. And along the way, you know, you'll be able to spike your share of balls as well. Okay, enough with the spiking balls. Um, the same thing can be said about worldly pleasures, right? Worldly pleasures itself is not actually a bad thing. It actually only becomes harmful when it becomes the ultimate and the end goal rather than just a means to something that is greater. Worldly pleasure has an important place in our relationship with God. Um, near, near the beginning of the Bible, in the book of Leviticus, specifically chapter 23, God puts out a command to his people, right? He commands his people to celebrate a bunch of these different feasts. And, and these different feasts and these celebrations are meant to actually remind us of something of God. It points us back to God. And here's an example in chapter 23, verse 40 to 43. God says this, On the first day, you are to take branches from luxuriant trees, from palms and willows and other leafy trees, and rejoice before the Lord your God for seven days. Celebrate this as a festival to the Lord for seven days each year. This is to be a lasting ordinance for generations to come. Celebrate it in the seventh month. Live in temporary shelters for seven days. All native-born Israelites are to live in such shelters. So your descendants will know that I had the Israelites live in temporary shelters when I brought them out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. These feasts, they, they were meant, they were given, they were commanded by God so that it can build into our understanding of the Lord, our God. And, and let's think about these feasts for a second. It's not like very like solemn and sad and it's like, okay, fine, I'll party. No, I, I think that I imagine these feasts and there's good food and there's wine and there's music and there's dancing and it's like a booming party, right? These people of God, they're enjoying every kind of worldly pleasure, but in a way that is lasting in a way where pleasure is not the end goal, but only a means to something that is greater. Worldly pleasure, in this case, it's a sign and a tool that helps us directly know more of God and enjoy Him more. Pleasure in the right context, it changes us in the best ways. It's only if it's, in the, it's part of a greater story. So John Piper he explains the function of worldly pleasures in a way that is so profound, right? He says, We know something of the sweetness of his friendship because we have tasted honey. We know something of his sustaining richness because we have eaten bread. We know something of the refreshment of his fellowship because we have drunk water when we are thirsty. We know something of the personal debts and exquisite intensity of person-to-person -person pleasure because we have felt sexual desire. We know something of his, the warmth of his affection because we remember being held securely by our mother. We know something of his worth because we have coveted gold. God has created all things good. And as we enjoy these good things, as we indulge in worldly pleasures, it is meant to build our gratitude and our trust, our dependence, our mission, and our love for God. So pleasure is not the enemy here. It's just not the end. And it will destroy you if it is the end because it will leave you with nothing. But if it is a means, if it is a tool, if it's a stepping stone to something greater, it will empower you. So let's, let's put this into practice, okay? This week, as you enjoy anything, the sunrise, the smell of morning dew, your morning coffee, breaks at work, food that, you know, God gave us taste buds to enjoy, friendships, gaming, movies, exercise, any kind of worldly pleasure, turn it from just an empty, in-the-moment uh, experience to a fulfilling joy by intentionally connecting the good thing with our good God. In, in 1 Timothy 4.4, 4, Paul writes, 
for everything God created is good. And nothing is to be rejected if it is received with thanksgiving. So give thanks for the good things of life and, and, and let it empower you for greater service so that in your growing relationship with God, you can be satisfied with a pleasure that lasts forever. Let's end with a conclusion. So, so what's the point of worldly pleasure? One, worldly pleasure as an end leads to a wasted life. It's, it's a dead end. So we must be aware of how our impulses and our desires control us and intentionally just take control of ourselves. And one way we can do this is a dopamine fast. The second point is that worldly pleasure as a means, it leads to a fulfilled life. When we understand that the good things of life directly teach us about the goodness of God, we gain something that will last forever, an understanding and dependency on our Creator. So we can practice this by being grateful to God for His good gifts. As we conclude our time together today, let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you for joining us today.